In this video, we're going to focus on Henry's Law. The main idea behind Henry's Law is that the solubility of the gas is proportional to the partial pressure of that gas. So if you were to increase the partial pressure of a gas above a solution, the solubility of that gas will increase. These two are directly related. The solubility represents the maximum amount of gas solute that can be dissolved at that temperature. Now this is of course at constant temperature. So if we apply a force to decrease the volume, that is the volume of the gas particles, according to Boyle's law, if you decrease the volume, the pressure will increase. As the pressure increases, we're forcing more gas particles to enter the solution. As a result, the amount of gas particles in the solution increases, so the solubility goes up. And that's the main idea behind Henry's Law, but let's work on some problems. Let's try this problem. The solubility of CO2 in a solution is 0.003 m, and that's the unit for molarity, moles per liter, and the pressure is 2 atm. What is the solubility of CO2 at 6 atm if the temperature remains constant. So what should we do to solve this problem? So let's look at pressure and solubility. The pressure changes from 2 atm to 6 atm. So the pressure increases and it increases by a factor of 3. 2 times 3 is 6. The solubility is currently 0 0.003. Now, according to Henry's law, if the partial pressure of a gas goes up, then the solubility will also increase proportionally. So it should increase by a factor of 3. 3 times 3 is 9, so 0 0.003 times 3 is 0 0.009. This is the answer. Now, Let's use an equation to get the same answer. The equation that you need is this one. P2 over P1 is equal to S2 over S1. P1 is 2. P2 is 6. If P1 is 2, S1 has to be 0 0.003. The units, I mean the values have to match. S1 corresponds to P1. Now we're looking for S2 the solubility when the pressure is 6. So to solve for S2, let's cross multiply. 2 times S2 is simply 2S2 and 0 0.03 or 0 0.003 times 6 is 0 0.018. 6 times 3 is 18. So now let's divide both sides by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9, so the solubility at the new pressure is 0 0.009. So that's how you can use the equation to get the answer as well. Here's another problem. The solubility of a gas is that number at 345 torr. Now what is the new partial pressure if we increase the solubility uh, to this new number? So let's use the same equation. P2 divided by P1 is equal to S2 divided by S1. So if this number is S1, this has to be P1. They have to correspond to each other. So this is going to be S2. And we're looking for the new partial pressure, or P2. So P2 divided by P1, which is 345. By the way, the units for pressure could be torr, millimeters of mercury, ATM, kilopascals, it simply has to match. So if P1 is in tor, P2 is going to be in tor. S1, we said it's 2.1 times 10 to the minus 4. And S2 is the other solubility, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So we can cancel these two numbers. And let's multiply both sides by 345. 
If we do that, these will cancel. And so P2 is equal to 345 times 4.5 divided by 2.1. So it's about 739.3 torr. Now what about this problem? We're given the solubility gas constant and the pressure. And we want to find the gas solubility. What equation do we need to use? The equation is S is equal to K times P. Now let's focus on the units of K. It's moles times liters raised to the minus one times ATM raised to the minus one which is the same as moles per liter per ATM. If you move L from the top to the bottom, the sign changes from negative one to positive one. It's a rule of exponents. Now notice that the pressure is in torr, so we need to change it to units of ATM. It turns out that 760 units of torr is equal to one ATM. So let's convert it to the proper units before we begin. So 500 torr multiplied by 1 ATM per 760 units of torr is equal to 0 0.6579 units of ATM. So now let's use the equation. So S is equal to K, which is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter per ATM times 0.6579. Units of ATM. And we can see that these units will cancel. And so S is going to have the units moles per liter, which is molarity. So let's multiply the two numbers. So S is equal to 9.87 times 10 to the minus 4 molarity, or moles per liter. So that's what you need to do for this problem. Here's a question for you. Which of these two gases, carbon dioxide versus sulfur dioxide, which one has a higher solubility in water? Which one's more soluble in H2O? Is it CO2 or is it SO2? Now water is a polar molecule and like dissolves like. so. The molecule that is more polar or that has more intermolecular forces between itself and water, that's going to be the one that has a higher solubility in water. Now if you were to draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, it is linear. Even though it has polar bonds, it has a dipole moment of zero. So CO2 is nonpolar. Now SO2, if you draw the Lewis structure for that, it has a bent shape, and as a result, this molecule is polar. And so sulfur dioxide will have a higher solubility in water than CO2. Between two gas molecules, the one that's more polar is the one that's going to have a higher solubility. Now what if you have two gases that are nonpolar? Let's say hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. Which one is more soluble in water. Now hydrogen gas is completely nonpolar. It's nonpolar as a molecule and it doesn't have any polar bonds. Now even though carbon dioxide is nonpolar as a molecule, it does contain polar bonds. Oxygen is much more electronegative than carbon. So oxygen bears a partial negative charge and carbon bears a partial positive charge. A second reason why carbon dioxide is more soluble in water than H2 is because it's heavier. Heavy gas molecules 
have more London dispersion forces than lighter gas molecules. So carbon dioxide will have more intermolecular uh, forces of interaction between itself and water than H2 and water. So that's the second reason, it's heavier. The third reason is that when carbon dioxide is placed in water, even though carbon dioxide is a gas, it reacts with water in the form of carbonic acid. And carbonic acid is soluble in water. If you draw the Lewis structure of carbonic acid, notice that it contains hydrogen bonds. So it can form hydrogen bonds with water. So that's another reason why carbon dioxide, even though it's nonpolar, it's more soluble than H2.